The fairgrounds at Henry, Illinois, excellent livestock, amazing food, and incredible machinery. Check out this car show, the new and the old. They feature it all right here, but what we're set to do is give you the best pullers in the world. It's the 12th annual America's Pull, right now. Welcome to the Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour. This is the Illinois Nationals presented by Rockstar Energy Drink. You're watching the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. Ken Stout and Leslie Mears here to call all the action for you. Of course, Crash Gladys will also help us out. This is one of the big pulls on the tour. And coming off event in Concord, North Carolina, that Carolina clay down there. Very different dirt for these guys out here in the Midwest. It's what they're used to. They really like it out here and it always proves to be a very powerful track. We'll have two different categories we'll cover here today. The Super Mods are in the house. We'll also have the Pro Stockers as we take a look at the points here for the Super Mods. Takes a lick and is on top. 46 points at Concord, the first pull, 50 at the second. That is a win. So a third and a win right off the bat. Gets it done. And then, of course, the Funny Farmall actually won the first pull out of the gate. Speaking of the Funny Farmall, there he is right there. Ken Vinny is backing up. Tough guy. And unfortunately for him, actually struggled a little bit last year in the middle of the season. Had some difficulties, you know, right there about the midpoint of the season with some mechanical breakage, but he's back together. You know, those motors got freshened up over the winter. Brand new motors on the tractor and proved that they are winning machines in that pull in Concord, North Carolina. And you can see very concentrated on the track, watching Rona, his wife, back him up there as he's inside of that tight roll cage. Absolutely, the tracker looks awesome as always. Nice and slow, controlled, back up, and then of course they hook up that huge chain. But it's just amazing, you know, that hook itself weighs like 25 pounds. You know, that chain's almost as big as your arm, and you gotta have it when you're hauling that heavy sled down the track. Look at that beautiful front end up, getting that good transfer weight as he pulls it down the track. Well, I tell you what, he is on his game this year right off the bat. And again, a very strong effort here, 316.09. Of course, he has the option to drop here, but can't imagine he's going to do that with this one. Anytime you get out past 300 feet, these guys have to consider just keeping it. I mean, 300 feet, the traditional full pull market. Anytime you get out there, just look at that. Lifts right off of the get-go. Great torque. That front wheels are 12 to 18 inches off the ground, just like you want it. And he gets good transfer weight and a good distance. And by the way, the track looks spectacular. When you kind of want that nice little gloss on top of it, that means it's nice and packed down tight. That means you've got a lot of moisture in the track that can come up to the top of the surface, which gives them great bite on the pulling surface, which means that, hey, it's going to be a power track out here in Henry, Illinois. Well, the next man pulling up is your reigning champion inside of the category. No doubt was hoping for a little better start than he got here at the first couple of pulls, but we had a chance to talk to Bill Leiser because he's flying some new colors this year. No doubt he's very proud of that. He's hoping he can win them a championship. Oh, Rockstar Energy Drink just brings so much to the table and it just livened everybody up. It just so the energy from the drink is nothing to say about what it's done to our team. And even Brian Knox from Sassy Engines is really on board with the, the Rockstar Energy Drink and it just Everybody comes up and compliments us on the new look, and we've always been red, and candy apple red, and they compliment us on the, the way the tractor looks with Rockstar Energy Drink all over it. Well, it definitely has a new flair to it, and he's right. I mean, it does. It brings about a new energy and confidence to the team. And he mentioned a key name there in Brian Knox. After winning the championship last year, Bill Leishner decides that he's going to switch from Aries blocks on those Hemis, and he's going to go over to Sassy Motor. So that could be a tribute to why he didn't do so well in Concord. And something falling off there right at the very end. It's kind of difficult to see what it was, but... 313.03, another solid effort here, but that won't be enough to win tonight. And you can see the inner workings of the sled and how it slows these guys down at the end of the run. When that box tops off, we're talking about upwards of 200,000 pounds right on the hitching point of the machine. 
the fuel filter uh, caps came off. Ah, so that is what we saw fall off of the tractor on the way down through on that particular pull. Well, one of the characters inside of the category is LD Nation. And LD Nation is always a tough competitor. He's a seasoned veteran, to say the least. And you got to ask him what he thinks about the track as he takes a look at it. Two-time event winner, LD Nation. LD, you've been on the starting line here, and you've seen two tractors go down. We know there's a bit of an issue mid-track with the hole. Are you satisfied with what you've seen, and what changes will you make to your tractor? Uh, well, I'm not sure yet. We, we had good luck. We won here the last two years. And uh, I believe the track's quite a little bit softer than it was before, so we'll probably be running the front of our tractor a little bit lighter than normal. Hopefully it'll work. That's something you never know till you get done. But uh, I believe it won't take quite as much weight on the front this time. That's what we're going to go for. And again, LD Nation referring to those meticulous notes that these pullers keep. You know, they won the last couple of years. They look at the weight set up on the vehicle. You know, they look at the gearing. They look at how they set up the tractor in order to set it for, you know, this particular event, which occurs right around the same time every year. So they can refer back to those notes. But of course, the track is going to be different each time. Ron Bargy is hooked up to the sled. The name of the tractor, the Apache. And you can see that he's got 400 pounds, four of those weights on the front end, and that's what's going to try to balance the tractor out. But it doesn't help him that he had that slight bounce right out of the hole. Yeah, he's just struggling all the way along. He has surpassed the 100-foot mark, which means the pole will stand. Unfortunately for him, he's in trouble there. There's your general tire top three. The Funny Farm All leads the group. This telecast is brought to you by Rockstar Energy Drink. Party like a rock star. E3 Spark Plugs with Diamond Fire Technology. And by General Tire. Unleash the Fury. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by RL Carriers. One call, one carrier. We'll continue on here. This is the super modified category. Pole number three on the tour. Ed Boyer backing up the super stallion. And another turbine power tractor here. Not uncommon to see a little bit of fuel underneath these things from time to time. A very unique mixture of kerosene and gasoline is what powers these aircraft engines on the track. Solid effort out of the Super Stallion as well. A little bit of a wild ride there towards the end. Pulled him off to the right, but we'll end up right at 300.30 feet. It's just amazing with these aircraft engines, you know, what they have out there, the wheel speed that they can get and the power that they can immediately pour into the track off the starting line. What's up, Greg? Yeah, it'll be 320 or a floater, so they'll all go to the trailer. And what's he talking about there, Leslie? 320 or a floater, obviously talking about the finish line. And they can decide where they're going to set that full pull mark. You know, traditionally the full pull mark always at 300 feet, but with the new rules with the Lucas Oil Pro Plane League, they can say 300, 310, 320, or they can float it out by there because these guys are making so much horsepower, they're hooking it up so hard to the track that it's really hard for the sled operators to stop them at the 300 foot mark. So they put that rule into, into the books for that process so that they don't have guys out here running their machines into the ground, running them two and three times each night. And again, we see a turbine powered tractor. This one called the Turbulent Toy for the former tank driver. Tim Howe out of the Roberts Pulling Stables. And, you know, this thing wow. usually gives him a turbulent ride as well. Front end way up in the air, maybe even too high. And it looks like it's going to reflect in his results as well at 234.56, well short of the mark needed to win here tonight. And that's what we're talking about with these turbines. They hook up so hard so early. It actually works to Tim House's disadvantage because he gets the front end up early. It comes down. He has to use more power to bring it back up. Oh, Big John pushing him up out of the way. Yeah. 234 is 56. Look at that. 234.56. Good, probably 18, 20 inches right there down in the ground. I just 12 to 16. He hit that brake. The left tire dug in real hard right there. All right, let's talk about the distance that they'll be pulling here tonight. 
where you can see a good look at our super clean track tonight. The Funny Farm all right out of the gate as the test puller goes 316.09. The Dirt Slinger not far behind, but everybody else kind of struggling to keep up. And of course, we'll check in with Big John Mears because ultimately, he will be the man that makes that decision. And I will tell you, there's a lot of times he just doesn't like to have to do it. <laughs> This is where you need like a voter vote from home on a website deal. Who wants to have a pull off or not? You know, do you want to float the finish or do you want to make it a 320 full pull line? Let the crowd decide or the people at home. So well, there you go. I mean, it is a big decision and he pretty much bases it off of what he's seen off of those five previous tractors and you know it's a thankless job you know he could call it perfect or he could be wrong and it's totally an educated guess because you don't know who's going to perform well on each track and who's not you can go by previous experiences but you just don't know night in and night out and here you've got the bunnages with the takes a licking machine coming off a of first and third out of concord the first ever win for the team and you know that they're supercharged and amped up for this event as they come in with the points lead. Man, he was sailing down through there. It sounded like he lost an engine right along the way. You could hear the RPMs change drastically as it pulled it down. So a tough job for our points leader here tonight. You see the sparks out of the bottom of that back left clutch. This back left was sparking pretty good underneath it. So John notices some sparks out of that, that back power plant or actually out of the clutch cam and issues right there. Of course, obviously, whenever that happens, he, uh, you can see the sparks right there. You're going to lose some power out of one of those power plants, maybe even two of them. It's over here. Which one did I say when I got to you? That one, the back left. Yeah. The sparks were at the bottom of that left clutch when it was coming down, it was popping the wheelie. That's not good because it almost acted like it was only running on three motors and not four. And he was off to a great start too. Looked like he was going to sling the tires right off of that thing. Well, when we come back, we'll continue on with the Super Modified Tractors here. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour. Stay with us. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Magnaflow. The first thing you hear, the last thing you see. Number of tractors already out here so far pulling tonight. Next one up will be the Indian Outlaw. We heard from LD Nation a little bit earlier in the show, and now he's behind the wheel. And he said he was going to take some of that weight and put it on the front of the tractor. He won here last year, but he's talking about, of course, his four aces machine. This Speedco Indian Outlaw is brand new for this season. You know, LD Nation, a longtime veteran with the turbines, got away from it last year, went to the reciprocating motors, and now he's back with these amazing two D11s and, of course, this beautiful-looking Speedco Indian Outlaw machine. You can also see the GoPro camera up there mounted on top of the roll cage. Intently watching those gauges to bring those RPMs up to that perfect point before he starts to take off. On oh, those big rear tires squatting and now digging in, and he's going to miss the mark as well at 274. It looked like a pretty good effort there, but a lot of tires spin right off the bat. And that's due to the fact that these super modified tractors only have one gear, so it's driving style. It's how much throttle you apply right off the starting line, and they have to apply a lot in order to get that heavy sled moving. You can see that there are seven weights in that box, 14,000 pounds, and that turbulent ride is what the sled operator experiences each time down the track. Pretty wild stuff to say the least, and of course they groom the track after every pull as well. You can see the the support equipment out there. The guys are very good at what they do and very quick, I might add. Yeah, two to three minutes is, is all it takes to groom the track for the next competitor. You know, it's all about grading and scraping and packing that dirt back down and try to create the same pulling surface for each competitor throughout the night, which is a very tough job. The down and dirty is up next. You can see him building pressure in the brakes as well. Left foot brake, right foot brake, and the funny farm all still your leader at 316.09. And Michael Stewart's big focus seems to be on just keeping the tractor straight. You know, if he can keep it between the white lines, there's nothing that these Hemis can't do, and he could take over the lead.
Well, these guys are uh, are beating some stuff up out here tonight. And that's what happens when you get in the Midwest and you get into these power tracks. And, you know, these tracks, if they were to put crops in them, would yield great numbers. We're talking in excess of 200 bushels per acre. And just look at that carnage on the down and dirty machine. Oh, yeah. He oh. grenaded one right there. That looked, looked like a rod bearing underneath there laying on the track and parts of the block. So he grenaded one. We'll take another look at it. Keep your eyes on the bottom right-hand side of your screen as you look at it. Oh, there it goes. Everywhere. Yeah, and he is still in the throttle, so that's what continued the damage. Obviously, they're going to keep going. The other three are still driving, so it doesn't just give up. And that one proceeded to destroy itself. And one thing that you don't realize as you're watching the sport and truck and tractor pulling is all this happens so fast and you've got to react to it inside of the roll cage. And sometimes there's just not enough time to react. You know, you may hear a change in the motor, but you don't have enough time to get out of the throttle in order to prevent some of that, you know, even more damage that can occur. Well, the next tractor is called the Texas Bullwhip. And as you can see, it's a beautiful piece. A couple of automotive style engines opposing each other and then the industrial style power plant up in the front of it with not one not two but yes three different turbochargers on that front power plant and probably the most unique thing about this one is there's two different sets of RPMs for those engines, so it's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, you got to bring the boost pressure up on the DT-466 out front while you're building the RPMs, then you got to let it all go at the clutch at the same time. And, you know, he does it very well here with this bullwhip machine. Well, and you can see the exhaust header going into that front power plant was glowing red. The turbocharger stuffing some heat and air inside of that one. And actually, the turbocharger just spooling down right there. You can kind of see that, that front wheel. Of the Texas Bullwhip, the 295.17, again, will be a little short. You know, it seems as the class goes on that these guys are having a hard time, you know, finding a good spot on the track and finding a good combination to get out there and chase down that funny farm all machine. We will continue on. Next up is the Dirt Challenger. Of course, we saw Bill Leishner up here a little bit earlier. This is his son. And Shannon, of course, works um, in conjunction with race pack data systems. And a lot of these vehicles out here on the track have those data systems so that they can go back to the trailer after their run and dissect all of that information and find out how every component of their machine was performing, you know, so that they can come back the next night and do it better, or go to the next event and make some changes to increase their performance. tires pushing a lot of dirt back up on that buckboard of the sled and the distance here 236.88 and you call this a power track and you can actually hear these guys run down through here the rpms change as they really get loaded up you talk about that transfer box pulling forward right there it starts putting all the pressure on the pan and man it pulls these guys down hardcore so Big John Muir is taking a look at that particular tractor as they unhook and Shannon pulls away back into the pits. The General Tire Top 3 still has the Funny Farm All on top. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Geico Power Sports. Insurance for all things that move you. Well, if you like wild looking tractors, Nothing out there any wilder than this one. It is a thing of beauty, plenty of colors, but more importantly, just the design of the tractor alone is nothing short of exceptional. It is a piece of art. I mean, it really is gorgeous. LD Nation pulls out tractor number two. That beautiful wedge style chassis on the four aces machine. And you can see he's got those four automotive reciprocating engines. Not a lot of movable weight, but you can see that he did move a little bit forward. He did that with the Speedco Indian Outlaw as well. And, you know, he's got the power plans to get it done on this track. Four of those big, bad Brad Anderson Hemis. You know, they've proven themselves on the drag strip. And they're becoming even more popular here with the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. Yeah, it's nothing better than seeing those tires squat right off the line. Man, and it pulled that one down as well. 277.92. 
That is incredible. When you think about how much horsepower is on that tractor and to watch it get lugged down, absolutely amazing. 10,000 horsepower unleashing right off the line. You can see he's full throttle. The butterflies on those injector hats are wide open. Amazing amounts of torque. That wedge-style chassis is built to take that abuse, but you, mean, you don't usually see that kind of torque out of these machines. You, can, you know with the torque that he's creating a lot of horsepower. And they'll get him unhooked, of course, again, and cleared and pull him out of the way. A lot of communication there between the track workers, and we'll continue on. Jamie Austin, the Predator machine, one of the few in the category, actually the only one that runs Chevy power. And, you know, you can see that he's got his injector hat set up a little differently, and he's got those motors set up outwardly. And the way that these guys make everything work is they run all four of those engines into a gearbox, which transfers that power into the rear end so that they don't lose, you know, a lot of that horsepower down the track. Well, the front end up on that one, everything looking good all the way down through there, 275.77, and there's no question, man, this track has changed since the first couple of tractors have come out. It definitely has, and you can see Jamie Austin starting on the right side of the track, getting pulled over towards the left side of the track, and part of the reason why his distance comes up short is he had to get on those brakes hard because he doesn't want to go out of bounds because that puts him at the bottom pack and doesn't give him a measurable distance. We'll get him cleared up out of the way and continue on with the category. And no doubt these guys are taking a look at this track, trying to figure out what they should do or what they can do to get out there where Ken Beeney has already achieved. Next up, the Joker, another beautiful tractor here. But that 316.09 set with our first tractor seems as though it's a mark that nobody can attain. And the track could be a huge factor here because it could be that the track is so good that these guys are losing power as they're trying to hook up those big tires back there. But remember, these tractors don't have multiple gears to choose from. The only thing that they can do is give the motors more or less fuel. So you can only take away so much fuel to create power before you're actually going to detonate the motor. You know, so they don't have a lot of changes that they can make. And as the track gets better, they can only kind of cross their fingers and rely on their expertise and their driving style and their knowledge of the track from prior year's experience to help them get on down there. We'll find out what the Joker has inside of this one. Again, parts breakage here and tough pull for our last competitor and the Joker, 192.18. No steering. That steering rod broke right there. I think he actually has some more issues than that as well, unless, of course, he felt the steering break and then immediately got out of the throttle, but that thing shut down awfully quick. These guys do have independent rear brakes where they could continue to steer, but a lot of times if a driver feels that they've got any kind of breakage, they'll get out of it right away. Guys, he has no steering. So Sean Swearingen, former champion side of the category with a tough pull here tonight. Let's get it down to Crash, who's with Jason Evans. On the double down machine, there's been quite a bit of drama tonight. You guys finally fixed the drama with the battery, and now right in front of you, oil's dropped on the line. How does that affect your approach? Well, first thing is we just hope it starts. So uh, the next thing is just drive around the oil on the track and try to stay out of it and go from there. It's at a position where it's pretty much going to be behind you the whole run. But then again, things can change as you go and line up. Yep, it sure can. Things change uh, every foot on that track. So uh, looks like it's a good track out there, about 150 feet. Hopefully it hooks in and goes down the track. Well, everybody struggled out here as of lately anyways. As long as he rides the brake, you'll be all right. Nice and easy, partner. And of course, he's talking about riding the brake so he can steer it because obviously he can't use the steering wheel to steer it. We well, get Sean out of the way there with the Joker and no doubt he'll get that one fixed up and ready for the next pull. And the Joker started to oil down the track about the 150 to 200 foot mark. And if John Evans can stay out of that oil slick, he's got a great chance of hooking the tractor up hard into the track and propelling himself down there to get towards that mark set by the funny farm all. Now, John Evans has a lot of experience in racing, particularly drag racing, and he can transfer some of that knowledge over to tractor pulling. 
Well, I, start, I started out drag racing, and, and it's uh, lots of reaction time in drag racing. And, and the car needs to be consistent for the type of racing they have these, these days. But uh, uh, tractor pulling is basically kind of the same thing. You know, you got to have a, a good smooth takeoff and, and get the, try to get the tractor hook in. And it's the same thing in drag racing. You need to, to uh, get your uh, uh, vehicle hooked in and know, uh, you know, after uh, driving these things for so long, you get to know, you know, you feel uh, uh, when, when, when the tractor gets hooked in. You can feel that, and it's the same way in drug racing. You can feel when it gets hooked in. Oh, and way off to the left. Whoa. Red flag out. He's hitting fire extinguishers. <laughs> stick with it, baby. Stick with it. Put on a show. I think he thought he was going on the other track and he was just going to keep on going. Just they, they, they say it's a two-track pull. He's using both of them. And this is where we talk about reaction time. You know, he felt it hook up hard. It starts to take him off to the left, and he just can't get on that brake fast enough and hard enough to get it stopped. And it's just a tribute to how much power these machines can make. Pretty wild ride, to say the least. You can see John very disappointed with his effort there. You know, he may be a mild-mannered guy and look very, very reserved, but he does have the heart of a champion. He is very competitive out there on the track. There is the results from your Rockstar Energy Drink, Super Modified Tractors, and the Funny Farm All. Congratulations to Ken Beanie. He's off to a great start here in 2010. You know, boy, if he can take this momentum and keep himself going, you know, we may look at a new champion at the end of the season. He was so close there uh, a couple years ago. Find out if he can find the magic in 2010. And of course, Bill Leishner with that new combination is in second place in the points with his Rockstar Energy Drink Dirt Slinger. It's funny how things work out. A situation here, you going first in the class, we thought would be a disadvantage. Lo and behold, you take the win. Ken, congratulations. Well, we definitely didn't want to be the test talk because they had to do some work to the track and we had no idea how it was going to work out. And I'm not a really experienced puller like some of the guys, Bill Lashner and some of the other guys, but I just had to drive it a little different. And when I got to the end, I could have turned that down, but I felt that it, the, the tractor felt good. It worked good. It just carried the front end a little bit, pulled hard. I just said, I'll take it. I think 316 was going to be hard to beat. And obviously it was. Well, don't go anywhere. Up next will be the Smokers. Big horsepower out of the Pro Stock Tractors. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Speedco. Truck lube and tires. All right, we're going to get you up to speed on the Pro Stock category. A lot of competitors out here, and we actually are up to the pull-off. We're going to bring you the pull-off, but we're going to show you how we got there. Nasty stuff. Nick McCormick can take a look at that one, man. He killed one right at the very end there as stuff was puking out of that one. Green Streak 2, driven by Greg Boyd. He's got a broken oil pump. However, he was able to take it back to the pits and get it fixed, so we will see his run officially in the class. All right, up next is Stuart Mays with that international. It's called the Billet Binder. The inaugural event for the Pro Stocks for the 2010 season. And you can see that these guys are tuned up and ripping up this track as Stuart Mays makes the first full pull of the day. All right, Kevin Masterson, one of the big pulling families out here. A lot of rivalries between some of these families. His tractor called the River Rat. Of course, that beautiful John Deere. For that motor popping and pulling down right at the end, he barely misses making that 320 mark for the full pull. The Green Line Express, Dennis Borson. And Dennis also would go out past the full pull mark at 325.01 to earn his way into the pull off way over there by the left side of the track. Man, you gotta love that big, beautiful black diesel smoke, man. And like the fans really love it too. There's nothing better than just seeing the effects of the horsepower inside the engine. This is the Green Streak driven by Steve Boyd, not to be confused with the Green Streak 2, who is driven by Greg Boyd. 328.80, and of course, former champion inside of the category, he makes the pull off easily. Rodney Schnickers meltdown, the international trying to forge its way into the pull off, and again will fall just short at 313 and 49. 
Love these tractors in this category. They actually look like farm tractors. It's pretty amazing. Up next will be the Hurricane Alice, driven by Travis Duman. One of the only ATCOs inside of the category. And you said they look like farm tractors. The only thing on these that are farm tractors are the sheet metals. Everything else, aftermarket performance parts. Absolutely. Contents under pressure, and yes, they are to say the least. Troy Schradel, the driver of this particular John Deere, and he will also make a good pull here and get himself into that pull off. Former champion in the super farm category, moved on up to play with the big boys and the 10 pros. Yeah, when you say that, I mean, we're talking about quite a step up. These are expensive machines at some quarter million dollars. A nice flame out of the pipe there on the tractor that's owned by Don Masterson, who is the father of Kevin Masterson, we saw earlier, but driven here by Dennis Miller. And you can see that the Tinker Toy reaps the rewards of a team of tractors using the information from the River Rat to put it in the pull-off. Well, we saw Greg Boyd a little bit earlier, unfortunately had a broken oil pump. They were able to fix that comes back out here with a green streak two and the full pull mark is 320 feet he goes 320.06 talk about skinny and into the pull off hey six hundredths of a foot that's all it takes you just have to get past 320 by a little bit to put yourself in there for the full pull after the initial pull this is what the standings were like and as you can see the top seven tractors here in the category all made the pull off so it's going to be a good one It'll be interesting to see what the officials decide to do with the sled, whether they're going to heavy it up or they're just going to let these bad boys run on out there and see how far they can drag that heavy boat. And as you can see, you talked about this being the inaugural pull for the Pro Stalkers. Some 24 machines out here competing right off the bat. So looks like it's going to be a great year for the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League and the Pro Stock category. When we come back, we'll kick off the pull-off in the Pro Stock category. Who's going to take home the first win of the season? The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Dart Machinery. We are at Marshall Putnam Fairgrounds. It's Illinois Nationals. Presented by Rockstar Energy Drink. We're in the Pro Stock category, and this is the pull-off. We'll get it down there to Crash for an update to find out if they change anything on the sled. Did they load that thing up, Crash? In the Pro Stock class, no changes to the sled, and according to Stuart Mays, no changes to his international red tractor either. It is a full-on battle of the red internationals and the green John Deere's. How about that echo? The Hurricane Alice, a force to be reckoned with. You know, most of our pro stock pullers from the Midwest, they're from out in the middle of Kansas. You know, everybody kind of wants to turn a blind eye to the big white machine, but it is a force to be reckoned with here inside the category, just like this tough billet binder. Not too many internationals in the field. A lot of John Deere's, but the billet binder will set the mark to beat at 322.96 and a very good mark. Well, and I just love the fact also that Stuart Mays is kicking it old school here with the old school style 1066 sheet metal. And you know, the tractor actually earned its name because he said as he was building it, it seemed like each part that he put on it was billet in order to make it stronger so it could perform better. And you know, he's really kind of revolutionized things with the internationals to put them up there in the top of the category with the John Deere's. Another good look at it there, and we'll find out if that mark is good enough to stand. Six more tough tractors will come out here and try to surpass that 322 mark. Once again, they'll get that sled back there and regroom the track. Of course, fans having a great time as well. And the fans intently watching that starting line. Earlier in the day, when the class was running, it seemed like all of the tractors that made it into the pull-off started from the exact same point on the starting line. So these guys could be building a road down here. They could take a lesson from Stuart Mays and that billet binder and run right in his tracks and try to pound down that dirt in the track, bring that moisture up, and they can extend their distance at the end by finding some fresh dirt on that road out there on the track. We'll have to see what Dennis Borson does here with the Green Line Express. Again, another beautiful tractor here. This obviously the John Deere and simulated bullet holes in the rear fender. 
And these guys take a beating. They are not easy on these machines. And of course, you can see that when you check out that big stove pipe on top. Now it's puffing white smoke right now, but you're going to see a little bit of flame come out of that stack right before they leave the line. And that's right when the water turns on, it's going to put out that flame. So they actually have fire inside of the engine that they're putting out when they turn on the water injection. Not easy on these machines when you think about you're setting them on fire each time you go down the track. And lots of fluid out of the front of that one. A big issue. Needless to say, that will end his pull early. And you can tell by the lazy smoke that he had right off the line. Look, he lets off the clutch, and as soon as he starts to apply the power, it immediately blows off there. And you know, that's one of those um, incidental problems that you have. It's a cheap fix, you know, but it's just very unfortunate that it happened to him here on the pull-off. And by the way, that, uh, that cord that was hanging down in front of the tractor, that is to connect to the batteries to help them start these big mammoth power plants. 680 cubic inches of power is what they've got underneath the sheet metal. And a lot of times when they took these tractors and these motors out of the field, they were right around 400 cubic inches. Okay, so they've bored out this block. They're putting a lot of stress on it. They're making a lot of power. You know, they're doing a lot of things with this motor that was never really intended to do. And as you said before, these are purpose-built pulling machines. You know, lots of aftermarket high-performance parts to get them to make that power that you're seeing on the track. That is Greg Boyd down there backing his father up, Steve Boyd, behind the wheel. Both of them former champions inside of this category. They spent a lot of time working on these things to make maximum power. And with the sport of truck and tractor pulling, you don't get to go out anywhere and practice. So when you put that engine on the dyno and you get to test it there, that's kind of like a practice or a trial run. And you can see Steve Boyd intently watching that pipe. A lot of these pro stalkers say that instead of driving by the gauges on their panel, they drive by the smoke that comes out of that big stove pipe. Well, it looks like he laid up a little bit early. I think there was some left in it, but 345. What an incredible job here. Well, and it's amazing. Once he leaves the line, you can see him looking down and to the right. And what he's doing, he's looking to the end of the track, looking how hard he's got to stay in that throttle to pass that leader cone. And he put some 20 feet on Stuart Mays. What an excellent job there for Steve Boyd. That's how you come out here and get it done, sending a message to the rest of the field. The Boyds are always tough, and there's yet another one inside of the category. We'll find out how he does in a few moments. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by K&N, the world's best air filter. Rockstar Energy Drink, party like a rock star. And by Lucas Oil Products, made in America, sold to the world. The Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour is brought to you by Canada. All natural pet foods. We are right in the middle of the pull-off in the pro stock category here at the Illinois Nationals, presented by Rockstar Energy Drink. Next up, the Agco, which was the leader at the end of our initial pull here for the category. Don't count the Hurricane Alice out. And you can bet that these guys are going to keep the same gear selection and settings that they used the first time out. We've heard that the sled has remained the same. So they're going to rely on that good information from their first pass down the track and hope that the track hasn't changed too much and the air temperature conditions haven't changed so that they can get that great performance that they had initially. Travis Doman of the Doman Farms. And picking the right gear right there. Yeah, just a beautiful machine. Usually these guys have somewhere between three and five gears to choose from. And while that doesn't seem like it's a lot, one gear up or down can make a huge difference. Green flag, the track is green, so it's all up to Travis now. By the way, the mark to be 345.09 to front end way up in the air. 
listen to that turbo just chirp as he gets out of the throttle. 309.7. He was much further than that in his first pull. Well, and you saw that bounce up and down. He leaves the line. He gets a nice, clean barrel of smoke coming out of the stack. So you know he's got good air movement inside of the engine. When the front end launches, though, and comes back down, he loses 5 to 10 feet off of his distance. So you can only imagine what kind of run he could have had had he taken a little bit more weight off the belly bar, put it on the nose of the tractor, and kept that angle of 12 to 14 inches off the ground with those front tires. And it also pulled him hard to the right, so he was in danger of being DQ'd. Didn't want to do that. All right, up next is contents under pressure. This one driven by Troy Schrader. We saw him earlier. The first pull of the day went 321.65. And of course, his dad, Ernst, giving him a few last minute tidbits of advice on how to get out there past that 345.09 set by the Green Streak and Steve Boyd. And of course, Troy Schradel, a champion in the super farm category. Of course, we mentioned earlier, there's a lot more limitations in that class. These guys making a ton more horsepower here. We're looking at upwards of 2,500 to 3,000 horsepower that these 680 cubic inch motors are actually going to make out here on the track. I actually had the pleasure of driving a farm tractor one time. Amazing. How did it work out for you? It was awesome. I had a great time. Pretty impressive. I'll tell you, talk about uh, having some fun. It's easy to see how these guys get hooked on it. Contents under pressure out here trying to get it done. A solid effort out of him, but it's not going to be enough to win. 314.20. And, you know, these guys could just be experienced, you know, just a little bit of fatigue on their motor throughout the day. Troy Schrader, of course, towards the end of the class, he gets a great hook. You can see the front end bouncing just a little bit, but that motor is still awfully hot and maybe just didn't have enough time to cool down to get its maximum performance. That will be good enough for third place as it stands right now in the pull-off. A couple of tractors left to go, but we're actually hearing Ticker Toy is broken and will probably not be able to make the call here. So sure enough, he does not make the call. Up next will be the final tractor in the pull off here. This is a green streak too. Again, another tough one. Looking to go out there and beat Dad up here, who has set the mark to beat at 345.09. When, of course, a team machine, and of course, they do share information with each other. You know, boy, I think it'd be awfully tough, especially as competitive as the Boyd family is. You know, once they get out there on the track, that whole father-son relationship goes away. They're just competitors out there trying to do the best that they possibly can. And, you know, if Greg can best his dad out on the track, he's going to do it. He's not going to lay up short just to let the old man win, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, Big John Mears gives him the green flag. It's all up to Greg Boyd now. Building that boost pressure on the line before they turn the water injection on. Looking at right around 100 pounds of boost as these guys take off. A nice straight run down the track. That thing is chugging. Woo! Talk about out there. We have a winner, 349.93 feet. What an awesome job. Hey, Big John was having to do some fancy footwork out there to keep up with it, backpedaling the whole way. The best part about this run, look at the front end. Up in the air, really never moves. The tractor goes completely straight. He doesn't have to get on the brakes at all, and that gives him that awesome result of that 349 and change. So the Green Streak 2, your winner here. And the Pro Stock category, here is your Rockstar Energy Drink final results, and that's how you get it done out of the Green Streak camp. Team Boy going to be first and second in the points leaving this event. Of course, Stuart May is creeping right up there with his billet binder. Taking the Pro Stock title with a 349 and change, just shattering the competition, both you and your father. And what did your father say to you before you ran? Well, I'd, I'd broken an oil pump before I took off on the line earlier, so I had to go back and put an oil pump on it. Wasn't sure what kind of shape the engine's in, but I made a decent pass and was lucky to get it out by six one hundredths of an inch. Uh, come back, Dad was in the lead, and he said, just scratch it. Just scratch it. That way you can run it tomorrow. So uh, then, I, then I thought, no, I need those points, so we're going to run it anyway. And you took Dad down. Congratulations on the win. How, though, did you win this? Because you did a little trick driving to get around that hole in the center of the track. Well, I don't know I, what I was trying to do. The, the track from 75 feet on was very, very good, but that first 75 feet had a bad hole in it 
And uh, what, I, what I was trying to do was to roll it out slowly and get it past that hole before I really got on the motor, try to get a hole to get some traction. And it worked for me tonight. Uh, I got to go back and look things over because the, the 50 points is going to be great today, but it's going to be a goose egg tomorrow if, if I'm tore up, and it's a good chance I am. So we'll see what happens. Awesome stuff. And, of course, that gets the season kicked off for the Pro Stalkers. Well, we hope you folks enjoyed watching the Lucas Oil Motorsports Hour. This telecast has been produced by Lucas Oil Studios. For Crash Gladys and Leslie Mears, I'm Ken Stout. We'll see you next time when we go racing.